Hey, what's up everyone? This is Jonathan Coase and this day's free AI slash automation training. I'm going to be kind of following up on the last videos that I made about autonomous agents. The first one, which was auto GPT and the second one was agent GPT. And that was about three months ago. And I want to start to tell you about this new multi-agent framework that was released from Microsoft, which is kind of a game changer and it's open source. It allows you to enable development of language model applications using multiple agents that can converse with each other to solve the task. So Autogen agents are customizable, conversable, and seamlessly allow human participation. They can operate in various modes that employ combinations of language models, human inputs, and tools. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through this process of how to set it up locally. And I'm also going to give you resources on how to do it without having to rely on your own machine and hardware if you don't have the like I guess the necessary specs because I did actually have to upgrade this just recently even though I just did it a few months ago I had to download the build tools as well as C++ and I'll cover that a little later on you'll see because some of the error messages that I had coming up in the command box to in order to start creating a multi-agent conversation framework I'm going to go ahead and read this to you so just to further break it down and, and it'll walk you through what happens next so that you can initiate the chat Autogen offers a unified multi-agent conversation framework as a high level abstraction of using foundation models. It features capable, customizable, and conversable agents which integrate large language models, tools, and human via automated agent chat. By automating chat among multiple capable agents, one can easily make them collectively perform tasks autonomously or with human feedback, including tasks that require using tools via code. This framework simplifies the orchestration, automation, and optimization of a complex large language model workflow. It maximizes the performance of the language models and overcomes their weaknesses. It enables building next-gen language model applications based on multi-agent conversations with minimal efforts. So in regards to the agents, Autogen abstracts and implements conversable agents designed to solve tasks through inter-agent conversations. Specifically, the agents in Autogen have the following notable features. Number one, conversable. Agents in Autogen are conversable, which means that any agent can send and receive messages from other agents to initiate or continue a conversation. They're customizable. The agents in Autogen can be customized to integrate language models, humans, tools, or a combination of all of them. So the figure below essentially shows you the so the figure below shows you the built-in agents in Autogen. And I'm going to make an additional video. If you're doing it from Visual Studio, I'm going to show you how to create a web UI in another video. But this is the conversable agent, and you can use it again a combination of language models, human tools. We have designed a generic conversable agent class for agents that are capable of conversing with each other through the exchange of messages to jointly finish a task. An agent can communicate with other agents and perform actions. Different agents can differ in what actions they perform after receiving messages. Two representative subclasses are assistant agent and user proxy agent. But just so that we can get started, if you go to this website right here, github.com slash Microsoft slash Autogen, we're going to have to grab this right here as well as some of the information below this page. But they basically break it down for you and all the different developments that's been happening since it's been started. So in March 29th, Autogen was first created. August 16th, there was a paper about Autogen. You can click on all this stuff, and I'll try to put it in the description as well. October 3rd, Autogen spins off from Flamo on GitHub and then has a major paper update. So this is what's been happening up until now. Pi Autogen version 2 will switch to using OpenAI version 1. Autogen is the top trending repo on GitHub. Autogen is mentioned by Satya Nadella. Autogen is selected in Open 100 Top 100 Open Source Achievements 35 days after spinoff. And then November 11th, OpenAI's, OpenAI assistants are available in Autogen and interoperable with other Autogen agents. So you can check out the blog post here for more details. And this is something I wanted to share with you too. And I'll have this in the resources below, but they go into further details on how to basically install it, set everything up. And I'll walk you through that in this video right here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and just download Python and we want to have the most latest version. So once you have that on your computer, it'll allow us to be able to properly install Autogen from our command prompt, which I'll be walking you through here in just a minute. And then after you have Python, you want to get Visual Studio Code and we're going to use this as a code editor. And we're going to use this as the code editor. So. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use OpenAI's API key in order to leverage their GPT-4 model. But in the next video that I'll talk about with Autogen, I'm going to be covering how to set it up using LM Studio's 
open source free language model software we can download and run local LLMs without having to pay for it because this can run up the cost as you can imagine with all those different ages for each iteration it'll run up the cost on your api so just make sure that you have all of this you have the python downloaded you have visual studio code and then the next thing we're going to need is git so i'm going to go ahead and pull that up right now so this is essential and you want to just make sure that you have the latest version and the one that properly fits your pc and once you have all three of these, we can go ahead and get started. So now that we have everything downloaded, we need to go ahead and go back to GitHub. We need to get this code here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on copy. And keep in mind, you can actually run Autogene on Code Spaces as well as Google Collab. But in this specific example and demonstration, I'm going to be showing you how to do it on your local desktop. So we just click to copy this link right here. So what ended up happening was actually, instead of using the main command prompt here, I went into the portable Git folder itself and opened up this one. So instead of using this command box, I used this one and it worked perfectly. So I just typed in git clone and then it basically clone. I put that link afterwards. So I basically put in git clone as I tried with the other command box and I put this link in afterwards and then it went ahead and took care of that. And even though it's a big file, it only took a couple of seconds and it was already done. So once that was done, as soon as it says finished, this will come up allowing you to go ahead and put another command in. After that, I type in CD autogen. And after I type that in, this line came up. And what I'm going to type in now, or which I already typed in, is pip install pi autogen. So we just click on enter. And what this is going to do, this is going to unpack the dependencies and rework the configurations of autogen. It's a pretty big file, so it's going to take quite a bit, but I'm going to allow this process to finish. And then we're going to move on to the next step from there. So as you can see, it's installing the build dependencies, getting the necessary requirements and going through this entire process. So if you run into this message right here, it actually tells you what to do. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. I'm going to go ahead and copy because I got to update it and then I'm going to paste it like so. And then I'm just going to click on enter. And so it should upgrade that for me already. So it says, well, Carmen already satisfied, et cetera, et cetera. I'm tempting uninstall. So it's going to take the previous version and install the new version. So I'm going to let it do that. So now that it finished that, I'm going to go through the same process. I'm going to go all the way to the top here and I'm going to let it go through that installation again. So I'm glad that this is occurring and these pitfalls are showing up so you can see me work through them because you might just so happen to go through the same exact thing. So at the bottom end, I'm just going to go back to where I was and then I'm going to paste in pip install pi autogen like so so where we got stopped at last time as far as like the building the wheels for the frozen list we got through it this time because of the fact that i installed the proper build tools from visual studio so just wanted to throw that in there as a as a caveat so now that we got everything successfully installed we can move on to the next step so we can actually start to run it now whether it be in the command prompt or in visual studio so i'm going to use visual studio i'm going to open up and then from Visual Studio, I'm actually going to open the folder where we cloned everything at. So I'm going to open that folder and find it. Now I had it in the portable Git folder as Autogen. I'm going to go ahead and take this and click Select Folder. So now that we got it open, on the left hand side here where it says OAI Config List is where we can make the adjustments as far as like the language model and where we put our config list as well as the API key. So what we can do is we can actually take this file and we can make the adjustments. Now they already have the sort of like a pre-written template in here where you just fill in the blanks. Now I do believe it's like 20 bucks to, to get GPT-4. So you wanna make sure that you do have that in there if you're gonna use the OpenAI key. And that's actually what I'm showing in this video. And then in the next video, basically it's sort of the same thing. All you gotta do is just use LM Studio to get a language model that's open source and plug it in here so you're not having to pay every time you use an agent. But they have different examples here and this is actually where you put your open ai key so you just take it from open ai so in order to get your key you basically just go over here where it says api keys and then you create a new key you want to make sure that you copy that key and then you put that in here so if you're only going to be using open ai you just only really need this area right here you can get rid of all of this right here and then you can get rid of all of this and what we need to do from here is just make sure that you have your actual key in here. So in terms of implementing and creating your own AI, Microsoft created different templates in here. So if you click on any one of these, you're going to get instructions and how to set up your different endpoints. So you want to create a new folder. If you want to create your own project, you want to create a new folder and just call it app.py. So we'll just create a new file and we'll call it app.py. And then from here, you can actually configure it and set the different endpoints. 
and have it come from your actual configuration list, the OA, OAI configuration list. You can import it from here and it actually shows you in these different templates as well as the main page. So if you go down on any one of these, they show you how to set your endpoints. You'll import it from Autogen and then you'll set your configuration list. It'll basically be coming from the JSON file. So the config list from JSON, what that is, is a function that loads a list of configuration from the environment variable or JSON file. So you essentially, you can either just copy this and take this and put it into that app.py. You just want to make sure this is set up to the point where you have it coming from your OAI underscore config list. And so they give you more instructions right here on what the config list looks like as far as that specific folder OAI. And we're just going to be using this because we're not using Azure. So you don't have to worry about any of these unless you're using those. Once you actually set it up and then you open up the terminal below is where you can create and initiate the chat. You have user proxy initiate the chat and they give you the example. So just keep in mind, it starts right here down in the terminal. So for an example, let's just say for this specific application that they created for a game of playing chess while chit chatting by GPT-4 agents. After you set your endpoints in that specific file, like just for an example, our file, which is app.py, once you set up your endpoints and you have your configuration list in the OAI folder, then you define the agents. From collections, in this specific example, they have it from a folder called collections. Ours is gonna be from Autogen, import, etc. So this is where you get into actually creating your agents and they walk you through this process right here. So in your app.py folder, you actually have this from Autogen import assistant agent user proxy agent. And then you'll create the assistant agent and you'll name it. So you put assistant equals assistant agent and then in parentheses name equal and then put the assistant or you can name it whatever you want. Or in right here, user underscore proxy, which represents you equals user proxy agent in parentheses name equals and you can name it whatever you want. In this case, they put user underscore proxy. So they have different notebooks here. So if you click on any one of these notebooks, they actually show you the process of setting up that specific agent. So for this case, auto generated agent chat collaborative task solving with coding and planning agent. So you go through that process that they did with the Docker. And once you get to the point where you need to set up your endpoints, you just basically, you can either copy this or you put this in import autogen and then the configuration list and they'll extract from that file OAI config list and use the information that you have in there. So the configuration list is going to look like this. So the model is GPT-4 and then you have your AI key in there. If you're using Azure, et cetera, if not, you don't have to worry about those. And you can set the value of configuration list in any way you prefer. As far as constructing the agents, we construct the planning agent and we name it planner and a user proxy agent for the planner named planner underscore user. We specify human underscore input underscore mode as never in the user proxy agent, which will never ask for human feedback. We define ask underscore planner function to send a message to the planner and return the suggestion from the plan. So as you can see, the planner is the autogen assistant agent. They named it planner and the LLM configuration is coming from the config list which is what they have set to come from here. As far as like the model GPT is in their API agent. So it's defined for this, as far as the system meshes for the planner, you are a helpful AI assistant. You suggest coding and reasoning steps for another AI assistant to, and it kind of stops right here. And then they define the description further right here. So the planner underscore user equals origin user proxy agent. And then they create the second agent, which will be user proxy agent equal planner underscore user max consecutive auto replies like how many how many times did they go back and forth before it gets terminated and you can specify that here and then do they need input from the human and equals never so once you define all of these different variables and you put that in the visual studio right here under app.py you put all that in here and it extracts from this folder as far as like your language models and your api key and then you define all of those objectives in this example and you put all of that in that folder there and once you have all this in order to initiate the chat we evoke the initiate chat so it'll be underscore initiate chat method of the user proxy agent to start the conversation when you run the cell below you will be prompted to provide feedback after the decision agent sends a terminate signal at the end of the message if you don't provide any feedback by pressing enter directly the conversation will finish before the terminate signal, the user proxy agent will try to execute the code suggested by the assistant agent on the behalf of the user. So it goes to that process here. As you can see, the user proxy is talking to the assistant, suggests a fix to open a good first issue of Flamel. 
So this was the message that they set in place and the assistant is returning back some information to suggest a fix, et cetera, et cetera, and it goes through the entire process right here. As you can see, they're communicating back and forth with each other. So the assistant agent provides the script and then it says, please run the script to fetch the list of open issues. After that, I can help you analyze one of the issues and suggest a potential fix. So it starts to execute the code as well as the auto reply. So then the user proxy executes that command and then it goes back to the assistant and then the assistant has the, these different arguments right here. So as you can see, they're going through an entire process of, of achieving the objective that you set out for and then it eventually terminates with no human input received because we predefined that in the beginning to not require human input unless you directly click enter. So I just wanted to give you this specific example of how that process works and you can use Visual Studio or you can use the command prompt and you can have it coming from open AI keys. I'll leave all of this stuff in the description so that you're able to further understand this. And again, remember when you go to Visual Studio under auto gen on the left hand side under notebook, you have these different examples. So you got agent chat for human feedback, solve code generation, execution, debugging and human feedback. So you can use any one of these for group chats and you can try out any one of these and you can start the game and you'll actually see it in motion like so. This is just a rundown. I wanted to walk you through the process. That's how you set it up with OpenAI's key. Now I'm going to make a separate video on how to basically get the language model that you get from LM Studio, which is an offline open source application that allows you to essentially download these language models that are just as good as GPT-4 and they have a ton of different versions of them. I'm going to show you how to connect this to Autogen and it's basically in the same area where you go to OAI config list, a different type of code that you put in here and I'll walk through that process in the next video. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is sort of the foundation in the beginning for me when it comes to Autogen and deploying it because I personally want to have different samurais all communicating back and forth with each other to accomplish a task, whether it be the cash alchemist, the dating and relationship samurai, the health and fitness samurai, or the master chef samurai, the money magician, etc. And I'm going to have all of them working in unison to accomplish a task. So I wanted to walk you through this process. It may seem a little overwhelming, but all you got to do is just refer to the resources that I have in the tools below, and they actually show you how this all works. So if you go to this page and just get started, just click on it at the top where it says get started, just start from the top and you can use my video as reference and they walk you through the entire process. So it's really simple, especially after you do it a few times. And if you don't have the necessary hardware, then you can use Google Collab or Code Spaces. That way you can leverage their GPUs and their TPUs and their computing resources rather than having to use your own RAM and in space as well. All right. So yeah, check this out. I have this in the description as well. And if you like content like this, then I highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel. Check out my website, jonathancoast.com. I'll talk about everything when it comes to business and generating traffic and increasing sales. And be sure to take a look at the tools and the resources below. I have everything that I included in this training. And with that said, I will see you in the next video. See you then.